uh so yeah topic for today is uh, interior lighting design basics and uh, for the same we uh, had lot of questions of what all we are going to cover for the event so let's discuss the uh, flow of the event we will be talking about uh, light uh, we will we'll, uh, we'll be learning some basic definition of light uh, melanopic effect of light goals layers of lighting design process aspects and type of lighting uh before uh, a heading uh, let me to uh, guide you a little towards our app archi hive uh, we are a, res a resource platform for uh, materials and uh, we come up with event uh, two events every month and previously we have done events on mood boards carpets minimalism you can find us on uh, youtube you can find us on instagram and as well as linkedin uh this is me introducing uh, this is me samruddhi uh, and shriya we both are from the events team archive and we have a uh, pramod with us uh, who is the uh, director of projects for radical illumination he has an experience of 8 years and he's ventured radical illumination uh, to uh, you know he's he's with us today to uh, provide a, a creative lighting solution illuminate spaces with deep understanding of architecture needs and technical aspects of materializing the light fixture so glad to have you here pramod um hi thanks amir thanks amriti yeah uh, over to you pramod we can start with the tech yes so uh hello everyone um Uh, I'll just uh, start with a small brief about uh, our firm. Uh, as such, uh, uh, I represent Radical Illumination. It's a, a lighting firm headquartered in Chennai. So we generally work with uh, architects and designers uh, right from the conceptual uh, stage, and uh, you know we try to understand uh, the space from their perspective, and uh, we come up with a lighting design which will uh, support their uh, uh, you know vision for the space, and. Uh, Uh, also it's uh, about the team it's a, a nice marriage between uh, designers and engineers uh, with a lot of passion towards light um, now next we'll uh, start by uh, covering uh, or just talking about what is light so uh, what is light light is uh, culturally light has been a very positive element i'd say uh, it uh, reveals the space to us and uh, uh, otherwise as human uh, couldn't see what is there uh, in the darkness uh, uh, or shadows we 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 consider that as evil and uh, technically uh, light is a radiating energy that can uh, stimulate in retina but uh, uh, there is a huge spectrum of uh, solar radiation that is uh, available of which only a small part is being perceived by us which are called as uh, visible light rays and um, there are also uh, you know a wavelength uh, of uh, lights which are like x rays and gamma rays which are not visible to us uvs um, and uh, light as such is a medium that uh, activates us and also makes us sleep and uh, actually nothing can actu uh, replace natural light it has uh, deep psychological impacts on us Uh, so most of uh, uh, the designers they take inspiration from you know natural light sources like sun moons and stars and that's how the design process actually start next we'll uh, cover the melanopic effect with this uh, so before i start on the melanopic effect uh, um, I'll, i'll walk you through a concept called as uh, uh, circadian rhythm now um, we humans has been exposed to sunlight uh, and the natural lighting for like uh, since our inception uh, for generations and uh, there is a specific rhythm of uh, uh, the natural lighting if you see morning it starts with like uh, the sunlight starts with 2700 kelvin and as the day goes uh, it's it's more of blue light we come to around 6600 900 uh, color temperature and as the day uh, moves more towards the evening uh, the uh, color uh, kelvin again shifts to again 2700 to the amberish uh, color temperature right and uh, we as humans have been used to this uh, kelvin shift for uh, uh, for so many generations now right um, so this this is called as circadian rhythm now as i told you light is uh, the, the uh, visible light is something which is being perceived by uh, our uh, photo uh, 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 cells of our eyes and um, there is a specific effect 
of uh, the blue light on these cells. So what happens is uh, there is a hormone called as uh, uh, melaton, uh, melatonin, which is being secreted, which is a sleep hormone. So when you when you get exposed to blue light, uh, our uh, um, uh, cells in the eyes it's it's uh, it restricts or uh, tries to stop the secretion of melatonin. And what what happens as a result of this is uh, you know. Uh, you, you, your uh, sleep hormones are being uh, on 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 continuous stress right so uh, that's why it's very important to make sure that uh, uh, we get um, you know exposed to the right color temperature and, and kind of lighting across this uh, ac across the day so there is a nice balance between you know the hormone secretions and uh, uh, our sleep and uh, uh, our active cycles um, now uh, now we'll cover the uh, goals of lighting um so next we'll go go to uh, goals of lighting which is uh, i'd say um light is something which uh, uh which triggers emotions and uh, uh, designing light is nothing but uh, communicating uh, our ideas through lighting and um, we uh, generally uh, we as designers we we don't see architecture and uh, lighting as two separate elements all right uh, uh, lighting has to be uh, the part of architecture and it is used to enhance and uh, uh, you know bring up the uh, key uh, key elements of the architecture so um, again as i told you uh, in, it, when it comes to light designing, it's not uh, uh, the, the two factors of light, which is lighting and darkness. It's not considered as you know uh, good or evil. When it comes to designing lighting, uh, it's it's more about the balance that you get. Uh, uh, it's it's about uh, again marriage of the lightness with darkness, which is used to define uh, any given space. Um, that that that's what makes the space uh, very interesting, actually. Um, now we'll cover the uh, next very important aspect of light, which is uh, uh, layering and hierarchy. Uh, before that, I'll just uh, uh, I'll, I'll just walk you through some basic terms uh, that uh, we have to understand when it comes to uh, selecting a fixture or designing uh, lighting for any uh, space. Okay, so the first uh, first uh, uh, factor that we have to understand is about the. Uh, um, it, it is called as lumen. Lumen is the uh, amount of light that is being emitted by a specific fixture. Um, I'm, I'm just walking you through these uh, uh, characteristics on very high level. As we go through the presentation, we'll discuss about this in detail. So, as I told you, lumen is the um, amount of light that is being, uh, uh, like you measure uh, uh, weight in kilograms and distance in meters, uh, lumen is the uh, is 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 the uh, factor by which we measure the amount of light that is coming out from a specific fixture, and uh, we have something called as CRI color rendering index. This is the, um, uh, the 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 ratio by which your uh, light can uh, reflect the true color uh, of any specific uh, material or a space, right? Um, and um, in terms of um, uh, system efficiencies, um, this is nothing but the amount of light that is actually, you know, that, that there are two ways when, when, when you uh, select a light, you know, the, 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 there are two ways of seeing a light fixture actually. One is by lumen output, which is uh, the output that the light is being emitted. And the second one is the system output. So uh, your light might be giving uh, a 130 lumen uh, output per wattage, but the actual fixture might just be giving 100 lumen per watt. So uh, these are quite technical terms. I understand I'll be covering this as a part of a detailed uh, presentation uh, as we uh, proceed to, through the design process. Mm, so these are uh, these are some basic terms that you have to understand uh, when, when it comes to lighting. Now we go, we, we go to the... Um, important aspect when it comes to designing of light. So next we'll cover the uh, layer and hierarchy part of it. So um, to start with, we are uh, going to uh, walk you through a very uh, basic steps of, uh, let's say, uh, designing lighting for a residential space. OK, so the first and foremost uh, thing that you uh, have to understand when you when you're designing uh, lighting for residences, you have to make sure that the environment is very warm and welcoming. Right. Um, so 
that's how the lighting is to be uh, prepared the lighting layouting is to be prepared and the fixtures are to be selected accordingly uh, the second in- important aspect is, that is to be considered is uh, uh, the path of the illumination you know you have to make sure that uh, uh, any visitor or the user is able to understand the form the space and is also able to move through uh, so adequate lighting is to be provided for uh, any user to uh, move around the space uh, the third aspect that you have to consider is the flexibility when it comes to the lighting schemes so uh, as i told you uh, uh, when i was explaining the about the circadian rhythm uh, we are used to a set pattern of uh, uh, natural light at temperatures right so uh, what we can also do is you know uh, one you can have sensors uh, uh, in in your uh, you know uh, in, in any space wherein the the sensor will dim the lights according to the daylight level when you have adequate daylight level you might not even need uh, artificial lights right so you have special sensor uh, which is like which which can kind of dim your uh, uh, artificial lights based on natural lights uh, that, that are coming based on lux flow that is being maintained you can uh, opt for kelvin shifts wherein you know you can change color temperatures based on um, the the you know based on the time of the day so uh, you can very well replicate uh, or at least to an extent replicate what is happening uh, outside by uh, maintaining the color temperatures uh, in 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 the residence or in an office space uh, uh, which is at least a little in line with the uh, outdoor and uh, which is the natural sunlight uh, color uh, temperature shift so morning you might have a, a very warm uh, uh, you know warm lighting Uh, and then as the day goes you might uh, you know you might shift to uh, 6000 kelvins which is like very blue light it makes you very attentive and uh, as the day goes uh, you you can again shift to the warmer colors so that you know you get that uh, balance and uh, you know the, the 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 whole place is sort of soothed out and uh, also what you can do is uh, uh consider uh, lighting in terms of uh, for any given space in a residence also right you can you you can consider uh, Uh, you have to consider uh, adequate task lighting uh, let's say you are uh, you are you are providing some lights for a specific task like uh, on on bed head uh, so a lot of people uh, might prefer reading uh, on their uh, uh, you know on their bed right so on their bed rest maybe if you are providing a light you should make sure that there is adequate lux level that is being received uh, which is going to be uh, you know which is going to make it easier for them to for any user to read so uh, typically we go for some something close to 400 for free lux level uh, for reading and uh, let's say you take another example of a guest room or a living room where uh, you know there is no uh, where, where where people might not be like reading books uh, it's just about uh, uh, lighting to for you to get the idea about the space and popping up the architectural elements so in these places you can uh, very well maintain a lux level about 150 that's uh, enough for you to you know get a nice idea about the space and at the same time it's very soothing light so uh, again you can play with multiple layers of lighting so you can have a cove light uh, in one switch you can have all the spotlights in one switch uh, and you can have some feature lights in one switch so what what will happen with this is like you 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 give them multiple options of perceiving the space in different different ways uh, when it comes to lighting and uh, uh basically uh the the whole idea uh, about lighting is uh, yes that uh, you have to pop out the architectural elements and uh, you know that that needs to stand out so yeah these are some very basic uh, uh, items to be considered when you are uh, uh, designing lighting for a uh, uh, any given space now next we'll uh, cover the uh, uh, so i'll i'll talk about richard kelly and uh, uh, what are his concepts uh, when it when it comes to uh, designing lighting so yeah uh, now we'll go to richard kelly's concept of um, lighting so yes um layers uh, as i told you um uh, the this is the factor to be considered when you are uh, designing lighting for any space um so uh, layers are, are going to help you uh, you know uh, show different architectural elements in different ways um and another important factor before we start on the layers hierarchy uh, to just give you a simple example uh, let's say you're in a space with uh, multiple architectural elements let's say you're in a restaurant so in a restaurant you might have a nice wall feature or a textured wall or you might have some nice wall arts here and uh, you may, and also comes the table tops uh, where in definitely you know uh, people are going to sit in and have their food so uh, hierarchy is nothing but prioritizing which of these you want to first pop out so as i told you let's say you are sitting in a restaurant wherein you have some nice tangier paintings or any nice wall art you might prefer to 
uh, you know highlight that so you choose that as uh, the, you, you choose that as uh, the first uh, uh, you know uh, focal element for that space and give lighting accordingly the second you might you, you might uh, like to uh, highlight the texture wall the third you might you you might definitely want to highlight the tables also so the numbering and uh, deciding on what what are the key architectural elements that needs to be popped out and what you want to settle up, uh, you know settle down uh, that's that's called as hierarchy uh, now we'll go to the uh, next important part which is uh, layering again so um, in the same example that i told you uh, layering is uh, nothing but uh, how different hierarchy hierarchies uh, interact with each other in a given space so uh, pretty much uh, the example that that i told you of you know lighting uh, the different uh, features by different ways like let's say texture wall i might uh, for, for a for, for a wall art i might i might go for some nice wall light which is like a picture light which will just highlight the picture okay and for the texture wall i might uh, instead uh, want to go with the light which is lighting the texture wall from bottom up so i might have a light source in the bottom and uh, you know it gives a dramatic effect uh, and uh, for the table i'm i'm, I'm going with the normal narrow beam spotlight so that you know the light uh, remains on the table and it doesn't escape much and there's this light contrast created so uh, i think i'm able to give you a vivid idea of uh, how the layering is being done in in, in a specific place uh, now we'll go to uh, Richard Kelly's principles. Now, uh, just to give a basic idea, Richard Kelly uh, is termed as father of lighting design, and uh, you know um, he's the one who who sort of uh, first came up with uh, a set of uh, principles uh, which you know can be implemented to enhance uh, an architectural element or a space. So uh, when we uh, talk about Richard Kelly. Uh, there are three important principles that uh, he is uh, uh, generally asked to follow or has been implementing in his projects which is he start, it, it starts with uh, general lighting where uh, you know um, uh, you in, in general lighting uh, we will consider how the space is being perceived generally you know uh, uh, if you uh, if you could see the uh, general lighting uh, image uh, uh, in the next slide um now uh general lighting is uh, the way in which you illuminate a, uh, a space uh, where you get an idea about the space as such uh it, it doesn't uh, have much contrast generally um uh, and, and this is the way the different colors in 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 a given space are being perceived uh, different forms that, that that are in a given space are being perceived holistically uh now we'll go to the uh, next important factor which is focal hue um now uh, focal glow is uh, is when you want to draw more attention over a specific object uh, so if you if you even see the reference image that is being shared in this slide um, the focus uh, uh, of the lighting uh, the, the intensity of the lighting is more towards those wall arts right so uh, and uh, also if you see on the rear end of the image you see that the books that are being uh, placed uh, on on the um, you know uh, Uh, shelves are being highlighted so uh, this is what focal glow means uh, wherein you you try to um, settle out lighting or you try to enhance lighting at one specific object or an architectural element so the interest uh, of any user or a visitor would move towards that right uh, the next very important factor that will cover is uh, play of brilliance so when it comes to play of brilliance it's uh, i would say it's exactly opposite to uh, the focal glow uh, because focal glow is something which will draw more light towards uh, uh, you know uh, it's it's a process when you, you you draw more light towards a specific object now uh, play of brilliance is uh, opposite because it's it's something which will emit lot of uh, light uh, to the uh, space uh, you know a, a basic example would be a chandelier which is going to you know uh, you you uh, let's say you have a you have a double height uh, uh, ceiling space you have a huge living area and um, uh, in where you, you go for a 12 13 feet uh, height uh, chandelier so that's going to be massive right and uh, that's going to emit lot of light so that's another way of attracting uh, focus towards a, a specific object uh, but a lot of times it might not even be a, a light source itself it might be another uh, element which which might you know uh, absorb a lot of light and reflect um, 
a nice example would be let's say you you are you are walking in uh, into a museum and uh, they have a huge dinosaur uh, you know a statue or a, 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 a or or a formation so what 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 generally people would uh, uh, tend to do in in such historic museum is uh, that that center piece would uh, they'd light it uh, so much that you know light will pop on it and then reflect back so that's what play of play of brilliance generally means when when you know you settle out uh, the complete area and uh, there's one element which like pop, pops out and shout, shouts out a lot right um this can also be some patterns of light and uh, or some uh, you know uh, some shapes that you want to work with yeah these are all possible um now we'll get into into uh, lighting design process um now as i told you earlier uh, again uh, lighting design is not to be seen as uh, something uh, which is uh, different from the architecture it's a part of architecture and uh, most of the time if you see um that's why lighting design has to be done in the conceptualizing stage of a uh, project itself uh, because a lot of times it might even involve change in architecture itself right so um, there are again two ways of uh, two ways of uh, you know designing a space one is uh, generally by going by standards which is like you know uh, let's say you are designing a hotel uh, you go by standards you say okay uh, the uh, you know the lobby should have this lux level the guest room should have this lux level and then you design lighting based on that that's one way of doing it and there is also the other way where you know um, lux level yes are required um, because you know they are sort of sort of some standards and guides that are being set across uh, in the industry uh, but uh, also there is another important thing to consider which is like um, the design part of it the the, the aspect of uh, focal glow and play of brilliance wherein you try to subtle out uh, a lot of other elements and you try to uh, you know provide a priority or hierarchy and come up uh, with the lighting design which will you know pop out uh, some main features it will uh, help uh, uh, you know user understand about the space and the form uh, at the same time you give them enough uh, illumination for the task being performed at that space so uh, so that's how you, you generally the lighting design process is being look, looked up uh, now i'll uh, i'll walk you through in detail about each and every step that is involved when you are uh, designing light so generally it starts with the concept design um, now i'll walk you through what we generally do uh, when it comes to concept design so this is nothing but uh, uh, as in architecture uh, we try to come up with a mood board uh, a story board wherein you know uh, we try to explain what is being uh, uh, you know what, 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 how we are envisioning the space as such uh in terms of lighting uh, uh what are the effects that we want to plan what are the uh, hierarchies and layers that we are planning right um i'll show you i'll walk you through some uh, project examples and uh, i'll try to give you a vivid idea about this um so the first uh, image that you are seeing is uh, the uh, left uh, top right uh, i mean uh, the the top left image that you seeing is a uh, uh, visualization that we've done for a guest room wherein if you see we've tried to uh, provide uh, enough contrast you know just to make sure that there's a depth created in the space and uh, uh, the, the the space is uh, very soothing and uh, we've tried to uh, give a, a decent uh, lighting on top of the bed and then we've given uh, if you see there are fluted walls which is again a very good feature uh, that we highlighted using a cove light and then there's a wall art on the right side which is being again lit uh, again on top of the sofa you know uh, the seaters might be used for uh, reading purposes so we've given one floor lamp on one end and a table lamp on the other end and uh, also um, making sure there is enough light for somebody who is uh, like resting in their bed and studying we've given another table lamp uh, on the side table uh, on the other hand uh, even on the study table we've given a narrow beam light so that you know there is enough illumination across uh so that's one one way on the right side if you see uh, it's again a, a, a lobby wherein uh, there is a nice arc that is uh, uh, the, 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 there is a curved uh, arc that comes in the wall that is being popped out uh, so the, uh, if you, if you see there are there, there are a quite a, a bit of geometrical forms that you know that are being that, that are being popped out by uh, making it a floating you know it, it, when, when you give a cove light uh, beneath uh, any form Uh, and and when when it when it lights up the surface it gives you an effect of the 
form being floating. So now that's what we've tried to achieve there. And then uh, uh, there is one nice floor lamp, which sort of, you know, uh, elongates and comes uh, exactly on top of the uh, seaters, which will give them again enough lighting for any task that they're going to perform there. And uh, uh, if you see the, uh, the other end, the tables are being washed from the below. Uh, so the, uh, and, and also there is a nice uh, uh, vertical uh, uh, beam that is being lit. Um, that's about, uh, you know, uh, that, that's how you generally look into it. So you, you compartmentize uh, and, and, and you prioritize the uh, elements that you want to pop out and then you decide upon the lighting. And uh, in the same image, if you see, there's another nice wall art which, which is being lit from the below uh, with, uh, with, with some, uh, you know, uplighters. Um, so these are some examples of how you should start with the uh, concept uh, and then uh, it is generally uh, tried to put in a vivid format and then it's being shown to architect. Uh, there, are, there are a few more examples that I wanted to cover. So what you see on the top is a day view of a space and then what you see below is a night view. Um, if you see below, um, uh, you know, with the daylight in, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's usual when you have enough daylight, no matter how much drama you try to provide, it's, it's not going to work out because it's going to eat away and, and, you know, diffuse the uh, space completely when it comes to lighting. Uh, but at night, if you see, what we've done is we've tried to accentuate the tables. We uh, Again, we are going with some, uh, you know, curve light to give you uniform illumination across the space. And if you see, there is lighting exactly just on the top of seaters. So you give them uh, enough contrast outside these seaters. On the seaters, you give them enough lighting to, you know, uh, so that they can have a nice conversation. You know, you can locate the person. Um, and uh, there's also wall washer. I mean, there's a screen washer because they had a, a very tall uh, windows uh, and, and nice screen. So uh, at the night time, we even preferred having a screen washer. Um, and the right side image, if you see, uh, it's again a guest room, uh, which is like uh, in which we've, we've given a, a basic, uh, uh, you know, a day view or, or a view without lights and with lighting. If you see the difference, uh, uh, you'd see the, the, the space is not being very, you know, uniformly lit, to, uh, but still uh, we've designed it, designed it in such a way that, you know, there is a decent contrast, but also you get enough lighting across different spaces that different actions are being performed, right? Um, so uh, now I'll uh, uh, walk you through the second uh, stage, uh, which is the uh, majorly into the schematics of it. Uh, okay, this is another important uh, uh, aspect that we wanted to cover today, which is the landscape lighting. But now, uh, when you consider landscape lighting, uh, see, uh, at least before like 15, 20 years, majorly uh, the, the source of lighting were used were majorly of flood beams. So, you know, it's not going to give you more depth or contrast. Uh, but landscape is again uh, a very interesting space to play around. You know, uh, you can pop out a lot of natural elements. You can settle out a lot of elements. And um, landscape to me uh, in itself is a play of brilliance uh, if you light it rightly right um, so that's a, again a very important aspect and a very deep subject to discuss about uh, generally uh, as a thumb rule I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that you know uh, when we have some nice trees we try to apply it and then uh, maintain contrast uh, you know try to get silhouette effect and uh, um, again uh, if you have some uh, a nice uh, bush around you try to wash it linearly you you try to mark the periphery uh, and again, it, it's not about, you know, lighting up everything, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, that's a very crucial choice again. Uh, it's about deciding uh, on the, uh, on, on what are the elements that you actually want to pop out and, and, and you want to settle, uh, settle it down. So again, yeah, that's, uh, and, and uh, again, in, in landscape lighting, there are various uh, ways in which you can light, light a specific uh, natural element. You know, you can use an uplighter, uh, you can use a washer. So these these are the uh, you know uh, the, these are the uh, design stage variables uh, uh, that needs to be uh, thought about very clearly, and then you 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 have to go uh, go go about the fixture selection. Now we'll uh, deep dive into the schematic uh, process of this, right? So once the conceptual stage is done, then we go to the schematic design. Now schematic uh, conceptual, as I told you, is, is much about. Uh, uh, you know, uh, working and finalizing on a mood board on a specific type of and layering of lighting, right? Uh, what happened is uh, in schematic is uh, majorly we try to come up with a tender package uh, wherein uh, you try to uh, do the basic calculations. Now, uh, uh, as I think I would have told you about lux levels, right? Uh, just uh, uh, 
I'll, I'll just try to brief you this one specific term. Lux, as I told you earlier, is amount of light that is being present at a given space. Okay. Um, uh, and there are standards, as I told you, 300 lux level. Uh, uh, 300 lux level is an average lux level for an office space, wherein on tabletop they'll expect 440 lux level where people are working. So um, any space you take, be it residential, be it uh, hotel, or be it a uh, uh, office, um, this is the stage when in, wherein you decide on the fixtures and then you do the basic calculations. Um, uh, what happens? At, uh, there are multiple ways of, and there are multiple softwares for this which are available. Dialex is one. Relax is one. So uh, Dialex is a software when, wherein you know import your uh, uh, your your plan, your uh, layouts with the furnitures. You can uh, define the materials, the uh, how much each material will will have the reflecting capacity, and then um, you you place the light fixtures and. Uh, and, and then you do a simulation. So what happens when you do a simulation is it will exactly tell you um, what lux level will be coming at that specific space. Uh, you know, considering the ref reflectiveness of the material, considering the uh, lumen output of your fixtures. So yeah, that's the technical part of it, the engineering part of it. But then, you know, um, we can tell you exactly how what will be the lux level uh, on that space after that lighting arrangement. Um, even before one single piece is being uh, put on the side. So the bottom right corner image that you see is a, um, is a isographic view of uh, how a simulation result will look like. Uh, now, this is again, a, uh, uh, it, it, it's a giant uh, lobby space with a center column, wherein we've tried uh, a bunch of chandeliers. Uh, so the, uh, this is a report that you get once you, you know, detail out the materials and then you, you specify right light fixtures there is something called as an ies file that is taken as an in, uh, input for every light so ies is nothing but a file which will exactly capture the output of your light fitting and which it, it will replicate it here right um, but that, that's a huge technical um, engineering aspect uh, uh, which we might cover as a, a part of uh, uh, you know uh, later sessions but uh, here is this is just an uh, for you to get an idea on uh, how you sort of uh, get a vivid idea about the lux level. So the colors that you see, each color represents a different lux. Uh, this is just an isographic view uh, for you to just get an idea of. Okay, so uh, if you see a band below this image, it will say green is about uh, 600, 700 lux. Uh, the uh, white part is about again uh, 200, 300 lux. So you, you can very vividly understand, okay, these are the areas that, that's going to be uh, lit with this brightness, with this, this intensity, and these areas are going to be circled down. So schematic is a stage wherein you uh, detail out these and uh, also you try to come up with uh, the right angles. Let's say you're using a tiltable fixture, you know, you, you have to again provide it with the right angle, where is to be, uh, you know, positioned and all those stuff. That's what is going to be covered as a part of schematic view. I mean, schematic design uh, process. Um, and as a part of tender package, we'll also at least try to lay out the basic details of like, okay, after doing a simulation, I'll understand, okay, this is the lux level I want. These are the fixtures that I've used. And uh, these are the specific uh, uh, specifications that I've used to do the simulations, which, uh, you know, which, which I've got it approved, right? So you, you put that in a, a specific BOQ format and then you give it out as a tender package. So that's about the schematic phase. Now we'll go into the uh, detailing aspect. So yeah, the uh, next we, uh, when we cover detailing aspect, uh, uh, I'll I'll brief you through what we do uh, in 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 this stage wherein uh, you know uh, this is majorly um, a stage wherein you you give the layouting. Uh, uh, the, the the electrical layouting, how how the lights are to be connected. Let's say we are preferring a, a dimmable option. What type of dim, dimmer is, is going to be used? What are the fixtures are to be looped with the dimmer? All this electrical layouting are are, are to be done, and then you, you uh, we have to integrate it with uh, the CRCP layouts, uh, right? And then. Uh, it, it also involves uh, the final uh, uh, tender packaging, which will, you know, uh, which will have everything right from, you know, the layouting, the the the, the dimmer circuits, how the dimmer circuits are going to be operated, and also um, 
we'll also have to detail it out to such an extent that you you, you say uh, in, in an elevation load, let's consider you having a wall lamp. You say at, at what height is the wall lamp being mapped? Let's say you have a chandelier. You say what is the height in which it, it is to be suspended? So all those integrities, basically everything uh, has to be de detailed out at this stage, right? Um, next comes the site support and uh, you know uh, the administrative part, uh, which is the final process. Uh, yeah, so these are some reference images showing you know how you consider daylight, how how the light is to be suspended, uh, how, how you uh, you know detail out the. Uh, size at which the light is being uh, suspended, how much length is to be done, all these stuffs, right? And the looping, the first image, if you see, it shows how the uh, light points are being looped to a specific circuit. So these uh, uh, technical parts uh, are to be uh, done in, in this space, right? So the next slide. Uh, this is about uh, issued for construction, wherein you know uh, the bid phase is pretty much done. Uh, majorly, we we tend to supply, uh, and also you uh, now this is where the supplier part of us uh, will have to pitch in, wherein you know uh, we give them basic. Uh, let's say uh, you're going for a chandelier. Uh, it, uh, it it involves a basic ceiling support, and uh, and, and then uh, let's say you're going for a wall light. What kind of uh, uh, line is to be taken? Uh, and all these nitty gritties, and then you give detailed drawings of the support system that you require. So let's say uh, you go for a very traditional 10-15 uh, armed chandelier that you see, no? uh, that will require a hook from the true ceiling, in which the, uh, you know, there will be a brass chain and the chandelier will be hung. So that's pretty simple. But when you go for a linear chandelier with like a lot of crystals, with a canopy at base of it, so what happens at this stage is you have to give, uh, you have to take some threaded rods you apply provision exactly or a little bigger than the chandelier size. And then you, you'll end up, uh, uh, you know, that, that will be back to your gypsum level. Uh, so all these technical details in terms of installation has to be done in this stage, right? And uh, also it involves a lot of administration, you know, seeing if, because we, we'll be giving even the tilt angle of any specific uh, uh, light fitting that is being used. Let's say even if you're going for a tiltable light source. So uh, that has to be treated rightly, otherwise the effect will not work out that way. So these are the stuff that we're gonna look into and in this space, right? So this is uh, pretty much the four steps, four vital steps in which uh, I've tried to cover right from the, you know, mood board stage to the implementation stage, uh, implementation stage, and I've tried to walk you through the processes uh, that are involved while you are designing uh, 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 lighting for a given space. So next, uh, we'll move on to the, um, uh, I, I'll just walk you through some basic mockups to see, you know, how the lighting effect will come. Uh, so there are two ways of doing it. Um, generally, um, as a lighting uh, designer, uh, at least at our firm, what we've seen is we are very hands-on. Um, so uh, as I told you earlier, there's one way of doing it, which is like it's taking the lux level and all those stuff. But uh, you know there are also a lot of other stuffs being involved. Uh, which, uh, for an example, I'll tell you the right uh, top right image that you see. It has a cold light. Uh, I mean, it, it has a, a, a cold light on the uh, just just beneath the table, which is kind of uh, popping up the brick texture, right? Um, you now, what will, what might happen is if you have a very glossy surface, uh, a marble which is very glossy. You might even end up seeing uh, seeing the dots of the chips in the marble. So these are uh, the, the the way your light is gonna interact with the materials, the feel of it that can uh, happen only at sight. So you know uh, that's why I was telling that uh, the lux level part and and the standard part is is all one aspect of it. But the, the, this this feeling and the see end of the day uh, light is something that is being perceived by us. So. Um, it, it is definitely required that you you feel uh, the lighting at a given space and then you know uh, and and then you take a call when it comes to lighting so yeah that's a, an example that i wanted to cover next slide So these are some after execution images, uh, uh, wherein uh, the first image, if you see, uh, it's for a, a residential uh, space uh, for a very uh, big jeweler uh, company, um, uh, a company's owner, wherein, you know, here we've tried to uh, make this uh, water body uh, floating. And uh, the next image, if you see that there is nice uh, daylight coming in, and then we tried to cut through and uh, we, we had, we've given this uh, play of brilliance with uh, some 
uh, huge decorative lighting in between the center. Uh, the next image, if you see, uh, is again a very nice uh, feature in which we've tried to go at, with as minimal ceiling punches as possible. Uh, and uh, the space is uh, it, it's very inviting because uh, we've tried to lift the uh, walls and the walls themselves are pretty fluted. So we try to wash them and uh, that's the main feature of that space, right? Um, and then another uh, outdoor space wherein we've tried to, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice geometry and uh, we've tried to pop out those uh, uh, forms by making it uh, floating. Um, another, uh, and you see a few more examples of some tech parks and uh, yeah, that's how uh, this is. Uh, I just wanted to show you some uh, inspirations of how uh, the design is being done. Um, now, uh, when it comes to inspiration, uh, as I told you, Richard Kelly, uh, the uh, image of uh, the first person you see, he he is the one who who's come up with the, uh, you know, uh, who, who who's the first uh, uh, lighting designer and, and who's who's come with this principle of lighting. Um, so lighting as such, uh, if you see majorly, uh, at least for a lot of. I, I actually, even centuries after architecture has come, lighting was was not uh, uh, seen much uh, in 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 from a design perspective. You know, lighting was majorly seen in in, in terms of uh, how the space is uh, being functionally lit only. Now, um, with uh, after Richard Kelly, uh, I'd say it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's after Richard Kelly's when uh, you know lighting designing is is being taken as a pro, you know as a profession by a lot of people, and uh, lighting as such is being uh, used as a art form uh, to convey uh, you know uh, your thoughts. So um, I'll I'll I always uh, recommend the same, uh, and uh, uh, you know lighting is. It's, it's not just a, a mode for us to function. It's it, it can definitely be used as an art form itself, right? Uh, you can you can convey a lot of your thoughts uh, through lighting, and, and that's why I wanted to uh, walk you through some inspirations uh, of mine. So Richard Kelly is one, James Turrell, uh, and Dan Flavin. I'll just walk you through some of their works in the next slide. So uh, the first image that you see is uh, uh, the iconic project of uh, Richard Kelly. Wherein, if you see, there are no ceiling punctures at all. Uh, he's, uh, it's a uh, it, it's a multi-story building. I think it, it was in New York, and uh, the way this has been uh, highlighted is by uh, washing the walls. Uh, the second image that you see is from uh, uh, this is from James Turrell. Now, um, this is very interesting because. Uh, James Turrell uh, is an artisan who can um, uh, manipulate uh, the space uh, uh, by using light and color. So that's the way uh, he takes the design inspiration and, and then uh, uh, his works are. So ma majorly he'll play with uh, different types of lighting and, uh, you know, when I say different types of lighting, I say different colors of lighting. And uh, uh, he'll try to uh, change the uh, form of, of, of the given space. And uh, Dan Flavin is again a very interesting artisan um, who uh, who majorly works with uh, minimalist uh, uh, you know uh, art forms. Like generally, he uses uh, this fluorescent tubes, different colors, uh, fluorescent tubes, to express his thoughts and his designs. So you know, these are some nice uh, inspirations that I wanted to walk you through, uh, and uh, maybe uh, might help you understand on uh, uh, how lighting. Uh, can, can 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 be used as an art form also, right? Uh, so now we'll walk through the key aspects of lighting, like uh, what are the engineering aspects? Uh, you know, how do you? What are the key elements that you you need to consider when you are lighting a space? Maybe to start with, and then as we go, I'll also walk you through the key characteristics of a light fixture. Okay. Um, so the you know as I told you, the it's all about perception. End of the day, when it comes to lighting, right? Um, uh, so again, specifically in terms of perception, you have to understand uh, what your light has to do uh, very clearly. So uh, I've just taken a very small example to walk you through this uh, uh, concept. So if you see on the right hand side, there are two walls. One is a texture wall and another is a plain wall. So uh, what we've uh, tried to show in this image is it's the same kind of lighting that is being done on both the walls. But if you see 
on a plane wall the light will uh, pop out and you know uh, 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 will, will be visible very loudly when you compare it to a texture wall so you have to understand the material uh, that you're going to light uh, you know where your lighting is going to uh, be incident on whenever you are uh, descending on uh, lighting for a specific space so uh, you might not if you if you don't wish to sort of you know uh pop out the light scallops on a, on on a space wherein you have a plane wall then you have to position and uh, uh you know find the right light fixing fixture which will not cause that effect right um and uh, there is also another important aspect that i'll walk you through in the next slide which is uh, about the um, inlinity of the uh, lighting with the architectural space so if you see uh, in the top left image uh, Uh, this is pretty much a, a lighting uh, which is uh, which is sort of forming scallops or popping out the niches uh, on the other end if you see um, the lighting is uh, it, it's it's like uh, not uniform or or uh, it is distributed in such a shape which is very distracting so uh, again this is another key aspect to consider is uh, when you are when, when you are doing lighting for any architect architectural element make sure that your light is in line with it so we don't want to show lighting as a a uh, different aspect uh, it has to be part of the architecture right so um, the, the 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 basic uh, specs of the light has to go with the architecture right and uh, if this if you see the same uh, slide the below two images now uh, it's a very simple example of uh, how uh, you know uh, lighting can also deviate you from uh, the actual expectation that is required so it's a basic tiltable spotlight which is uh, being uh, um, which which is being uh, incident on a specific wall it shows you a specific effect and the same light when 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 you try to you know tilt it the other way around uh, the person will lose interest from the actual element that has to be popped out because there's there is there's no uh, there is no um, uh, i i'd say there is there's no uh, feature which is being popped out the other end right uh, now uh, we'll also uh, deep dive into the basic elements and uh, you know uh basic nitty gritties that uh, we have to consider when you are choosing light okay so first we'll start with luminous flux uh, remember the example that i told you about uh, a pendant light on top of a table uh, with a bulb light source inside uh, just consider that analogy as i brief you through this uh, luminous flux is nothing but the light that is coming out of that light source so if you take a bulb the light may come out in all directions right so that's what is called as luminous flux next we'll cover luminous intensity mm, okay before that I'll, i'll i'll cover the efficiency part of it so um now uh, as i told you earlier uh, the output of a light uh, and uh, i think a lot of you would have already um, you know come uh, come across this uh, uh, statement that don't choose the light fitting by voltage choose it by the lumen output so uh, i'll i'll just quickly brief you about this concept uh, every light fittings output is actually measured in lumen because light output is measured in lumen okay uh, so uh, one quick example let's say uh, you're going for a brand which is having uh, uh, you know a, a bulb or a, or or, a, or any light fixture which is like 7 watt and let's say that uh, that bulb's efficiency is 100 lumen per watt so end of the day it's 100 lumen per watt and the bulb is of 7 watt so you'll end up getting an output of 700 lumen uh, at the same time maybe there is another brand or another fixture uh, uh, or, or another bulb which uh, which is having a lumen uh, no luminous efficiency of 90 lumen per watt at the same wattage of 7 watt you might not end up with 700 lumen but it will give you 630 lumen so already there is a 10% difference between the light output which is coming off the same voltage bulbs so uh, that's why uh, it's majorly termed that you finalize on light fitting based on the lumen output and not by wattage right um, having said this and uh, hoping that you understood what uh, the lumen output of a light fitting is luminous uh, efficiency is Uh, the number of lumen that will come from the uh, light output per watt so uh, as i told you the the one bulb which will give you 100 lumen per watt the efficiency is called as 100 lumen per watt the other bulbs efficiency is 90 lumen per watt uh, so that's about the uh, luminous efficiency now we'll talk about luminous intensity right uh, now luminous intensity is uh, 
it's nothing but the intensity of light that is being you know that comes out in a specific uh, direction or a specific angle uh, going back to our initial analogy of a table on which a pendant light is being lit with a bulb uh, as i told you earlier the bulb definitely is emitting light in all the directions so the bulb is going to emit uh, light even inside the pendant right uh, but uh, the actual light output that is coming outside the pendant is 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 being called as luminous intensity so uh, you know the sounded lumen is being lit across so maybe uh, you, you, a 200 standard lumen output of the light is arrested within the dome and uh, only 300 lumen output comes out of the fixture so that is what is called as luminous intensity which is the output of the fixture right now we'll go to the illuminance part now illuminance is nothing but the uh, again uh, this is uh, what is uh, measured in terms of lux uh, illuminance is nothing but the amount of light that comes on top of the table so uh, we know that the fixture is a pendant we know that the light source is the bulb we know how much light that bulb is emitting and we also know how much light is coming out from the bulb i mean out out from the whole fixture now uh, the amount of light that is uh, falling onto the table is called as uh, Uh, luminous illuminance or uh, lux level uh, now we'll move on to the next aspect which is luminance um, luminance is nothing but the uh, light that is being perceived by us so as i told you uh, uh, all the factors are about uh, in you know, the engineering aspect uh, of uh, uh, how much light is emitted how much light is present in a specific uh, Uh, space uh, but luminance is more about perception uh, you know uh, how much you are able to perceive when the light is coming out uh, reflecting from that surface now another important aspect to be considered for when you consider uh, or select lighting is cri cri as i told you earlier is the uh, it's abbreviated as color rendering index is uh, it's how close your uh, light is able to render the actual color of the subject um, so generally it has to be uh, in the range of uh, 80 to 95 97 and as i told you 100 is the benchmark which is like uh, cri of sun's light uh, so that's about cri um now we'll cover the next next as aspect of light which is uh, glare uh, again a very important uh, aspect of light uh, because glare is something which is which is going to uh, you know which is something which causes you discomfort so whenever you look at a light source uh, directly uh, there is a, a discomfort that that happens uh, because of the intensity of light in your eye right that's called as glare so uh, some quick ways to eliminate glare is you always try to go for a light source which is deep recessed so uh, you know th there will be uh, some lights in which the source will be on the surface so when you, when you are putting a light in the ceiling the light source will be visible on the surface but there are also a lot of lights in which the, 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 there will be a, uh, a decent baffle length and your light will be inside uh, the ceiling like at least 1 2 inches uh, pop it so you should generally uh, consider those light fixtures when you are uh, trying to control glare and also another important aspect is the way you place your light fixtures right uh, like let's say you're doing an office space uh, and you have a laptop uh, uh, on on you know you have people working on laptops and systems in the table if you're going to place one light just on top of the user set that light's reflection will will, will again uh, pop out in the screen of the user so uh, these are the aspects that you have to look into from the uh, uh, placement perception also so that's how you generally avoid glare uh, now we'll uh, cover the basic types of lighting um again there are many type of lighting uh, we just trying to cover you through some very basic ones which is uh, which are few that goes on the ceiling which is recessed type there are also some that are surface mounted on the ceiling there are track lights track lights are uh, ones that are uh, mostly used in the stores and you know malls where in you know you you will get the flexibility to move the light and you can tilt the light so that the merchandise the specific merchandise can be highlighted and there is also like low voltage tracks which are called as magnetic track nowadays so um, magnetic tracks are generally used when you when you want a very versatile way of lighting like magnetic track is a, a track in which you can use a spot or a diffused or a track spot so let's say for a specific arrangement of a space you get the uh, you know you you get uh, full uh, uh, you know you get the full hand to to choose the effect you want maybe on top of a seater on of a living area i'll go for a diffuse lighting the same track uh, uh, just moving towards if there is a wall art i'll just use a track spot there and i'll just highlight the wall art and then i'll leave the other area settles 
and and all this happens with one spec why not one, one general uh, light light source i don't have to go for multiple ceiling puncture or multiple type of lights that's where magnetic track actually gets the full advantage right um now there are also indirect lighting where you, you know you don't see the light source itself uh, the, the 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 output that is coming is the something from a reflected surface or a reflected ceiling like cold it is a very nice example about it where you know you don't see the light source itself it's just the light that is reflected from the ceiling that is uh, uh, coming down and there are decorative lights there are pendant lights uh, there are lights which are placed in ground there are play, uh, there, there are uh, which which will sort of uh, you know just wash the wall again there are two types of uh, uh, way the output will come out from a light like there is symmetric lighting there is asymmetric lighting symmetric lighting is lighting in which you know uh, given a light source light will come evenly in both the uh, uh, you know uh, in all the direction asymmetric lighting is a lighting in which the light will come out only in one specific direction uh, so that's why majorly we use wall washes for so yeah these are the basic type of uh, light fixtures that we wanted to cover um and this is just an illustration of how the light will come out from uh, different types of light fixtures um so uh, yeah these are about the uh, th these are some basic uh, placements and uh, types of uh, lighting that we want to cover um so moving on to the next uh so that's about the uh, session um and uh, i hope i have uh, shed some light over uh, the basic design aspect how you do designing and what are some engineering aspects that is to be covered when uh, you are designing and selecting light fixtures for any given space so uh, i'm open for question thank you for the time given guys thank you pramod thank, thank you so much so here we end our webinar uh, in terms of the presentation and we are open for questions we also received a set of questions while people registered so pramod we would like to ask you the same questions so you could give a clarity on the attendees whoever are present here uh, so starting with the first question it was asked by uh, it was asked how to choose the perfect size or shape of a lamp for a space um now uh, see that is uh, i'd say uh, that that highly depends case to case uh, generally i, I uh, what you should use as a thumb rule is uh, i'm 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 considering you you are asking about a fixture that goes on the ceiling uh, recess light maybe it's um, yeah general uh, uh, ways of choosing light fixture that is that goes into ceiling is first one you try to make as minimal ceiling punches as possible so uh, depending on what type of lighting you want to do what is the uh, you know how much contrast you want to give or what you want to pop out we generally recommend you go with minimal ceiling punches so the light points itself are not visible as much as possible second the thumb rule is you go with the minimal aperture possible you know there are light fixture which are with with a with even 10 mm aperture size so which is like pretty much you put it in the ceiling you will not be able to locate the light itself it's just the effect that is going to come out so i'd say uh, answering the question you have to go with minimal uh, aperture size possible okay uh, so moving ahead to the second question it is basically how to create a perfect setup of uh, lighting and reflection um now when it comes to uh, Uh, when it comes to lighting uh, setup of lighting for a given space uh, it has to it it it, it always looks ple pleasant when when you do uh, um, you know multiple layers or i'd say uh, you have multiple mode based lighting um, in terms of uh, reflections uh, uh, i'm 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 i think what i i assume you're trying to cover the shadow part of it um, so again shadows are not uh, it, it, it it's again subjective uh, having shadows is, is 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 not bad is what uh, i i consider and um, in terms of uh, in terms of shadows uh, what 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 will make it interesting is uh, you give a decent contrast across the space um, so that uh, you know uh, the, the main features are being popped out that's all okay so now we would be taking the questions uh, that are here uh, so it is asked by padma priya 
uh, what kind of so software is used here to illuminate uh, lights in a room? Okay. So majorly we use Dialex. Uh, Dialex is a software from Philips, and then there is another software called as uh, Relux. So majorly these two uh, softwares are being used to uh, you know uh, come to know how the Lux level will turn up. Uh, we even Padmapriya, if you have any other doubts or if you're not clear, or you can raise your hand. We could unmute you. Um, okay, then I guess you can move I, ahead. Yeah, yeah, you can move ahead. Uh, so, yeah, it asked by Sanket, uh, the Lex, Lux level, maybe. Uh, could you explain a little more for the on the question, Sanket? You were also raising your hands. Sanket, can you unmute yourself, please? So I guess he was asking about Lux level only. He wanted to understand more on Lux level. Okay. Um, coming to uh, okay, in terms of uh, Lux level, uh, as I told you earlier, this is the amount of light that is going to be uh, amount of light that is present in a given specific uh, uh, space. Um, uh, so that it's a quantity of light uh, that that is uh, being. Uh, illuminated on a specific space. So the, the, the unit of uh, measure, measuring uh, how much light is there in a given space is called a stux. That, that's how you, you measure light. Uh, and in terms of uh, the standards, there are, yes, specific standards that are being set uh, by the IES org. Uh, it is uh, sort of followed worldwide. And uh, IES, uh, it, there is a specific guideline given for uh, you know, different spaces of, uh, you know, different different kind of uh, spaces and uh, what, what, what are to be the last level to be maintained in every space. So basically, um, if we ever like take a space, uh, for example, so uh, what is the minimum, is there any like minimum lux level or something that we need to consider uh, in uh, terms of energy and stuff? So yes, uh, there is uh, so these standards is being set by IES and uh, you know that's already available uh, in uh, IES org uh, uh, website. Uh, it's a as I told you, it's an international IES lighting standard that is being set, uh, which again states that these are the minimal and uh, uh, I'd say minimal and uh, uh, acceptable uh, levels of lights uh, that, that 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 are to go uh, for different spaces. Um, uh, there is no way we can term that uh, this is the minimal lux level required because it, it, it highly depends case to case. Uh, if you take an outdoor space, right, uh, like a garden area, there are 20 to 30 lux is, is itself considered as a decent lux level. But, but when you come into an indoor area, uh, let's say if you take a residence, generally we try to maintain 150 lux. So uh, there is not, you know, it's not possible to, to term one lux level for all the spaces. Uh, it highly varies case to case, and uh, that's why they've set, set a standard and guide for lux levels that are permissible for uh, different kind of spaces from the ISO. Okay, uh, so I think moving ahead, uh, when we are designing a space, we look at the lux requirement of the space and select the lumens power required to fulfill the requirement of lux. But if the color of the room is darker or brighter, then we, we, we might need to change the lumens of the light. So how do we tackle that uh, other than physically checking the lights on the site? So uh, a very, uh, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting and very valid question, actually. And uh, this is something that you, you, you'd see happening in a lot of your sites. So that's why I told you uh, that it's very important to consider the material uh, and the color theme of a given space. Uh, let's say uh, the output of a specific light fixture that I use in a very glossy or a you know a white room is completely different than the output that I'll perceive in a room which is like very dark color uh, and uh, you know which 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 will tend to absorb a lot of light. Yes, definitely there will be uh, uh, you know uh, uh, way lot uh, difference when when you put the same light under uh, a reflective. 
uh, uh, surface versus something that will absorb a lot of light. Uh, we generally, uh, the, the way we do it is uh, uh, when we simulate in, in dialects, we we we'll put it with the material only. So, uh, and with the material, we'll also say that, okay, this material is going to give this much, uh, uh, you know, th th this has the capacity of reflecting like 0.5, 50% of the light will get reflected or 70% of the light will get reflected or let's say it's black, we'd say it's about 70% of light which is being absorbed. So uh, these are some things that we can easily tackle in the, in the design stage by when we are simulating it. Yeah, I think that was a really interesting question. Um, moving ahead, again, there's a question by Padma Priya. Where can wall washers be used? Uh, see, uh, Wall washing, it's basically, it's used for uh, illuminating vertical surfaces, right? Exactly, exactly. So uh, let's say you have a feature wall uh, or let's say you have a texture wall or you have a nice long passage, which 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 like, you know, uh, uh, let's say you have a narrow passage where you don't want to do any ceiling functions, but you have nice textured wall. So you can prefer going with uh, just washing your walls. Um, so... There are again different types of wall washers, you know, there are wall washers that go on facade, which will, you know, light up even 40-50 uh, feet height uh, from, from one, one uh, base. So, as, uh, uh, you know, generically, uh, wall washers are asymmetrical lighting. Uh, I think I explained that difference, right? Symmetrical is something which will give lighting on, on, on all directions evenly. Asymmetrical is something that will uh, light up only on one direction. So when we prefer wall washer, these are all majorly asymmetrical lighting. So only one side uh, that the light is being pushed. And uh, yeah, it, it is to be uh, highlighting the vertical surfaces. Yeah, I think it can also be used to, um, you know, it's basically used to give attention to the walls and maybe it can be exactly. used to uh, accentuate an entrance or maybe a firework or if there is any artwork. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It is used in museums, I've seen. Yes, Okay, uh, so before going ahead, uh, we have raised a poll and we would request all of the attendees to uh, like kindly vote. So it will be easier for us to um, bring more workshops and more webinars for you in future. We'll wait till then. Apart from that, if you guys want to follow us, uh, you you can you have our Instagram handle here, as well as uh, for for any queries there we have given you the link. Also for specifically for interior lighting, please uh, reach out to Radical Illuminations as well. We have given you the details. Yeah. Any more questions, Shreya? Uh, yeah, there are questions. Actually, we're waiting okay. for them to uh, take sure, up sure. the poll. Yeah. Um, I think we'll go ahead with the questions. Uh, so next one, it's apart from cove lighting, which other lighting is efficient with respect to spaces like home theater? Um, see, um, home theater are the spaces where we generally try to maintain a lot of contrast. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, majorly we, we, we just try to uh, light up the walkways. Uh, that's that that's the, the that's the general idea that we've been using. So cove light, yes, it's very handy because it's indirect source of lighting, and you get a very min, very minimal light of lighting out of it. Uh, that too, specifically with most of home theaters being a very dark themed, uh, you know, which will reflect, uh, which will not reflect much of light. What we can also look for is uh, wall lamps, maybe which are like uh, you know, which will create a nice dark patterns. Uh, so. What I'd say you consider is uh, when you look for lumen output of a specific picture, look for something with a very, very minimal uh, lumen outputs. That's the best way you can do it. So cove light, uh, yes, is is, a, uh, is one of the right way. Um, majorly we use this color changing uh, 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 indirect lighting stuff. And also wall lights are uh, another good option to look for. And uh, even in your uh, ceiling lights, you can go for very narrow beam lights. So, you know, you can go with uh, something with 16 degree, you know, very narrow, 12 degree uh, uh, beam, narrow beam lights, which is like, it, it will just form a, uh, if it is, if it's places at a decent distance, no, it's just going to form uh, some uh, round scallops on the walkways and, and the pathways first, just for you to understand the, and walk through easily. All right. Um, moving ahead. So the next question is uh, by Tripti. 
what distance should be there uh, in between two concealed lights and also if that depends on wattage of light um see again uh, it's a generic question a concealed can be a spot concealed can be a panel light when you go for a panel light uh, the light is going to be diffused um, i'm sorry i think i, I didn't touch base the touch base on the beam angle part of it so beam angle is nothing but the uh, angle in which your light to output will come out so uh, for a panel light the beam angle will be like this 120 degree for a narrow beam spotlight the light output will be like this very narrow that's that's where the light is going to intensely fall on so um, coming back to the question um, if you're if you're going for a panel light uh, generally um, uh, i'd say uh, uh, for for anything close to 1200 to 1500 lumen you can maintain distance of 5 feet but see this is just a thumb rule that i'm giving uh, uh, for a very general uh, aspect uh, it, it varies case to case uh, but uh, like if you're expecting somewhere to, uh, 450 400 lux uh, in in 1 meter from your uh, floor level uh, which is like your table top you can uh, very well go at uh, find a feet for 1200 lumen uh, fitting to fitting distance that is uh, be it vertical be it horizontal both and when you go for spotlights you have to consider the beam angle part so each spotlight will have its own beam angle. Something may be 45 degrees, something may be 24 degrees. So if you place two 24 degree beam angle lights at uh, five and a half, six feet, what will happen is the, the two beams will, will be, you know, very intense on one specific space and there will be a dark spot in between. So if you want to maintain uniformity in such spaces, you go for a wider beam or you bring the lights closer. So based on the beam angle of a spotlight is what you have to decide on the distance between the fixtures. That's what it. Okay, that was really helpful, Pramod. Uh, so moving ahead, we have opened the floor for all the audience. If anybody wants to unmute themselves and talk, they can. Um, till then, we'll I guess go ahead with all the questions that are already here. Um, okay. Uh, which shape of LED lights are preferable for a classroom in a commercial building? Round or square? That, that depends on the architect. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, see. Highly depends. Uh, the, the, this uh, I've been seeing both types, uh, but uh, generally from installation perspective, circles are easy to install. You know, it's easy to, for you to mark and install uh, round lights compared into square lights because uh, you know when you put circle, the the uh, from the ceiling layouting perspective, installing circles are easier to mark and uh, and and. Even if there's a slight deviation, you'll not get to know when comparing it with the square, right? But uh, depends highly depends on the uh, architect's perception. Some some people they don't like uh, square. Some people they don't like circles. So that's how it, it goes. But uh, you know the output doesn't matter. Uh, the, the apertures, uh, uh, you know, the fixtures body doesn't. Uh, uh, I'd say that that, that that doesn't work on the output that is coming out of it. So it's it's the aesthetical part. I also think it depends on the client as well. Yeah, yes. I think it is the main element. Definitely. <laughs> okay, moving ahead, there's this question, how much interior lighting plays a role in minimalism? Uh, so before Pramod, you go ahead, I'd like to say um, we have also conducted a, like, a webinar on minimalism itself. The last workshop we conducted was on minimalism. Uh, so I think Pramod can give you the answer. But for more details, we've already talked about this. You could also visit our uh, YouTube channel. We've already uploaded it and uh, watch it. Pramod, you can also answer this question. Um, so uh, again, a very uh, interesting question. And this has to be uh, answered from the uh, designer's perspective. Uh, from a lighting designer perspective, I'll say, um, see, um, Min minimalism as a uh, concept uh, is, is something which is like, which is uh, which is the way lighting is to be designed itself. If you ask me, uh, because um, the, the, just uh, visualize a space which is like very flashy. Uh, uh, no matter how many architectural details are are going to be there in that space. Uh, they, they're not going to pop out and speak for itself. But minimalism, for me, at least, is a way by which you can, you know, uh, settle out the space and 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 pop out the uh, uh, attention towards what you actually uh, want the users to, you know, get attention towards. 
and that's how i see it uh, generally uh, you know uh, conceptualizing uh, lighting uh, uh, layout in, in terms of minimalism yeah i also feel uh, that in minimalism lighting plays a very important role but it is then again subjective to the client if he is willing to go for a natural lighting through minimalism or artificial lighting he wants like what kind of thing he wants uh, also i'll i'll add on one more point uh, to this uh, as you brought this up uh, uh, see um again considering it from the uh, you know artificial natural lighting perspective uh, you can say that uh, uh, layouting uh, lighting uh, in terms of minimalism uh, you, you again you, you i think you should avoid as many ceiling punctures as possible uh, and uh, enhancing or you know using the the, the, the daylight is, is is the best way uh, any time okay uh, so uh, having cutouts in the ceiling wherein uh, or having as uh, you know as big uh, uh, windows as possible allowing the uh, sunlight to come in uh, i think uh, any lighting designer would, would actually uh, want to work that way because end of the day nothing can replace what uh, what what natural light can do yeah that's true so there is another question can we find the output of the lighting setup without the mentioned softwares um so if you want to uh, definitely uh, to 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 come up to lux level there is no thumb rule or a formula um uh, which which can be like you know uh, which you can compute you know which we can do the math and uh, uh, get the idea about but what you should definitely look for is uh, Maybe the, 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 the one way of 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 doing it is like uh, you have a basic arrangement of the lights that you selected. Let's say uh, in a room you are you are planning to put like uh, eight or ten uh, light fixture at a specific distance uh, to form a uh, you know to 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 get a certain level of brightness. What you can do is put two of those at the set level of uh, distance that you plan, and there is something called as a lux meter, uh, which is uh, which will measure the lux at a given uh, area. okay so you can uh, you know very well use a lux meter to find out how much lux level is coming so that's another way by which you can at least get an idea but never do it with one one light source and at least do it with minimum two light sources because you know uh, with one you'll not get the actual idea of how the light will be distributed when you space these two light fixtures out right so um, i i i that's a easier way to do it uh, using lux meter maybe and also always go for calibrated lux meter there are lots of cheap uh, lux meters that are available in the market uh, which will like which will have no relations to uh, the actual lux level that are going to come so you can uh, go for brands like lutron who are like you know european uh, they are still pocket friendly but uh, yeah uh, these don't have to be calibrated very frequently or you know you don't have to get a calibration report for them very frequently okay so, I guess we can uh, pass on to the audience. Whoever wants to ask uh, can unmute this themselves and go ahead. Um. All right. I'll take ahead the question by Roshni Multan. Multani. Mm-hmm. which software will you suggest for best re- results in rendering so that the client finds it realistic enough um see we generally uh, again it it, it depends uh, uh, when it comes to rendering we use sketchup we uh, mo- mo- you know we, we use sketchup models we use uh, lumion um it it highly depends on what the uh, 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 you know uh, what the architects are are using i'd say i, I think uh, Mm, this will be more relevant uh, uh, towards the interior designer or architect who is working on. But in terms of lighting, I'd say uh, generally we we come up with SketchUp models, we render it, and then we do Photoshop on top of it, so that you know we can exactly uh, uh, show them uh, our our uh, you know mood board designs. And uh, yeah, and to some extent we try to use Lumion, but Lumion sometimes it becomes very jazzy actually. Photoshop is something that we are very comfortable with. Yeah, that's true. What's your take on V-Ray and uh, softwares like Enscape? Uh, 
uh vire is something yes we've used uh, uh, again it's it's very good for specifically for uh, uh, lighting it, it it itself comes with a uh, set of ies i believe um but uh, yeah i'm um, we we're still uh, working more towards uh, the photoshop uh, and and the lumia zombie okay that's nice um anusha would you like to take up the next question Actually, yeah. so we had audience asking us if we are taking up any lighting courses. Say right? that was there. Currently, we don't have any plans. Maybe Pramod, if you have, we can take it up. But you can surely follow us for more insightful, you know, like sessions. Yeah. Uh, what I could recommend is there is a um, community called. Uh, It's called as VDSL. Uh, uh, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll just uh, quickly uh, find the term. It's a virtual design community of lighting designers i guess so uh, that's a forum where you can you know uh, find a lot of uh, interesting content from a lot of lighting designers so if you're really passionate and interested uh, to know much about light designing guess that's the two go please yeah i guess uh, people can stay uh, up for our uh, instagram handles we could share it on that sure um so the next question is which top 5 brands would you recommend for light selection um see i uh, if you ask me uh, any point i'll recommend european uh, because uh, what 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 generally is trending with india is you know uh, it's, it's i i'll say it's uh, i'll say we are picking up uh, in terms of standards we are trying to go more towards uh, european brands uh, and uh, it's not uh, you know it's it's not about any specific uh, 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 you know uh, uh, sentiment about any specific country uh, what i generally see is uh, lights that that come from european brands are are, are um, things which which are deeply looked into in, in terms of engineering perspective so you know you might find a, a, a copy of a european brand which is like Fifteen twenty thousand available in an imported Chinese brand for two thousand. Okay, the looks might be same, but uh, you know uh, the the output ways the, the 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 detailing that they look into is way far more than uh, the copies that are being made for it. So ultimately, it's a copy. So you know uh, it's it's being made just as a replica of that picture, but it's not required. I know it's definitely it's it, it's it's not taken into consideration all the engineering terms of it. So one simple example I'll tell you there is a light in a brand called Pro Lit in which uh, when you tilt the light fitting you know it it is about 180 degree tiltable when you tilt the light light fitting they make sure that they make sure there is no light that enters in, even into the ceiling even when you tilt the light right that's how the light is being designed and uh, you go for a, a alternative uh, you know a chinese or in any other imported brand uh, that's not, that, that's definitely not, not going to consider that and uh, i told you an aspect of beam angle right so generally when a european brand says that 24 degrees my beam angle that is going to be the light uh, that is going to come out of it majorly they'll have 3 to 5 percent spill so if i'm saying my light is 24 degree beam angle the maximum it can deviate is by 2 to 3 more degrees but uh, when you go for a uh, alternative imported brand and this happens even the agonies it happens even in the large scale project you know wherein uh, a designer or consultant would have given them a, a nice european brand uh, considering the specs and the output but uh, client would not know that you know he'll say that is also like this also like that's also 12 what this also 12 what what's the difference why is this uh, you know uh, one tenth of the cost but the actual uh, way you look into it, it is this technical aspect the, the beam angle that a chinese brand might give might be 24 but is actual actual output will be 36 so you know the whole idea of uh, going for narrow beam is making sure that the light is falling only on a specific space and the contrast is maintained in the surrounding areas when you choose lighting in this way what will happen is it will eat away all the contrast so end of the day what you designed itself will not be materialized so that's something that you know people have now started understanding in india um, uh, but yeah there is long way to go okay so i think we have another question what is the use of pendant lights um now um 
these are majorly decorative light, lighting elements i'd say uh, pendant lights uh, it's just a feature that uh, gets added to your space uh, specifically uh, when when you talk about let's say you are uh, you know uh, let's say you are maintaining a very uh, cementish background in your uh, uh, space and uh, you have an island table in your kitchen or a, or if there is an island counter or a linear table on on, on the space you might uh, you, uh, on the linear table you might definitely be it an island counter or be it a, uh, you know an office a conference room table you might definitely want more lighting on top of it right so instead of going for a lot of light fixtures there you might prefer a one decorative light fixture which will aesthetically also be appealing and will go will gel with the space and also give you enough lighting on top of the table so that's why majorly you use pendant lights okay um so i think that was all the questions we've got if anyone has any other questions the floor is open for you you can go ahead and ask hello hi tripti uh yeah so my question was is there any secret to hide the a uh, driver of light yes it's called the strap door <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, jokes apart see uh, it's a very uh, interesting question um, majorly right in, in lot of projects uh, the architect might actually not want a trap door because you know uh, they want a very seamless uh, ceiling uh, uh, layout so um, that's when you have to plan the lighting way ahead you know even before your false ceiling is being done right at the conceptual stage so uh, i walked you through the four design process right uh, once the con- uh, once the initial uh, mood board is done and when the schematic is being done that's the that's the time when we we already decide upon where the drivers are to be placed so uh, when you plan it ahead you might keep the driver in a wall panel uh, or you can try going for uh, a driver which is like you know uh, as minimal in size as possible but i'll tell you one thing very frankly trithi is like good brand drivers majorly uh, are slightly bulkier um, and um, it comes uh, it's engineered in such way for a specific purpose uh, but answering your question uh, if there is no option to provide any trap door uh, this, this is to be uh, taken in consideration uh, Way ahead, your false ceiling is being done. At least by the time you are doing the channeling of the false ceiling, make sure that the drivers are kept in a wall panel or or any like if you have any wardrobe coming to try to get the drivers there. So these are to be uh, laid out at that time itself. Uh, am I answering your question, Tripti? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we've got another question. Yes. Uh, it's difference between pendant lights and spotlights. No, it's completely different. See, spotlight is a primary light source, wherein uh, pendant lights is a decorative light. Okay. Uh, then we have another question on how does light affects the mood of the user. Uh, see, again, it, it depends case to case. Uh, I'll tell you one example, wherein uh, you know, few clients. Uh, they want very bright light specifically people who are very old age they'll not be comfortable with uh, you know contrast or you know uh, the dull lighting so you have to understand the user you, uh, general questions what we ask is how well traveled they are what is the type of lighting they require are they okay with contrast so uh, and and generally if you if you're designing a residential space you ask them what, what is the feel they want when they come to house see that some some people will say see i work in like 6000 kelvin across the day i want very soothing lighting i want 3000 kelvin when i come home so uh, answering the question it depends case to case uh, we can't uh, we, we we can't give one lighting solution that can you know uh, that everybody will be able to accept and go definitely not it depends on the person but uh, one way you can do it is again as i told you is by uh, setting multiple scenes or, or you know setting multiple hierarchies so uh, based on the, uh, on the any user's mood the space can you know uh, uh, can pop out uh, differently uh, it can be conceived differently uh, and also i think uh, in a more generalized way uh, it's basically the warm lights and the cool lights right so warm lights makes yes. the environment feel more welcoming and relaxing yes like cooler lights makes the environment more stimulate stimulating okay they exactly. make us feel more alert 
Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. that's the uh, Kelvin shift also that we are talking about, wherein you know the 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 uh, white lights are the blue lights uh, which will activate us and which will suppress the melatonin secretion, wherein the warm lights are something which will uh, which will let the melatonin secretion happen. Okay. Uh, so I think that was all we had. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. We really had a very interactive sessions. Thank you for uh, indulging so much, and thanks, Pramod, for such a wonderful presentation. It was really helpful, and uh, I think everybody everybody here uh, would have really enjoyed it. It was very uh, knowledgeable, and thank you so much. Um, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. Please uh, keep following us for more such events. And Thank you, Seth. I guess you can keep following us, uh, like Archie Hive, as well as uh, uh, Radical Illuminance for, uh, like, for proper and more upcoming workshops. Uh, we at Archie Hive keep on uh, creating webinars almost every second week. Um, keep following us on Instagram. Thank you.